All right. I'll let Blackburn introduce us because I'm a bit lost for words at the moment. Hello and welcome everyone to the AAOL game for the night. Tonight we will be casting uh, two teams named Pistachio and Skeet. Both of these teams are currently in the running for, I believe, the Division 8 playoffs. Uh, cast casting with me today will be uh, Sandshark. And helping us stream this will be Raidbreaker. Just a bit of context beforehand. My name is Blackburn. I was casting, I've uh, been a caster for AOL for quite a long time. Took a bit of a break. Now I'm back. Uh, Sandshark, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I am Sandshark. I'm a bit of a newbie caster here, but I also am a player with Veridity. I'm trying to balance both to see what I like best and get involved in the organic Overwatch scene as best as I can. So, a bit of a sudden. Uh, introduction to this game we just kind of got thrusted in without introduction lines so we we'll have to be very quick here but yes today we have pistache i just keep forgetting the team names i really should pistachio remember them. the peanut and yes. skeet like skeeting skeet's delights that's a bit of an odd team name there but anyway we're on the first lee jane tower so we're on the uh first point of lee jane tower so let's see how both teams go and here we go both teams are out the floodgates are unleashed we have a few interesting compositions here. We have the Hanzo here on Pistachio. Skeet Delight seems to have the Genji. So there's a lot really going goats at the moment. But here we are. First little main here right here. Both going to be engaging quite spectacularly at the moment. Reaper's just throwing out his shots. Here comes a charge here from Rob Zoni. Trying to get all up in there. Grill, but the Zarya pops the shield, preventing that. But even then, it looks like the Skeet Delight will be able to get the first two picks and seem to be securing the first uh, capture here. Pound for pound, uh, the amount of DPS output coming on the side of uh, Team Skeet, they're much higher. So the shield of uh, Unpoppable, I believe, uh, not going to last very long with the amount of damage coming through, especially with McCree right click being such a heavy damage dealer. Uh, right now, thinking up to about 12%, the enemy te uh, the team of Pistachio haven't really made a push yet. Let's see what happens coming in. Yes, I don't know if you saw before, but Autosai got down to 5 HP, was just able to survive. There comes a charge. Oh. Rob Zoni is really doing a fantastic job here as the Reinhardt, really protecting his team, holding up the other team. Here comes a high noon. Cubes just throws it out there, picks up. Oh, wow, this is absolutely fantastic. Oh, sorry, I'm just having a bit of lag at the moment. Give me a sec. My bad. All right, I'm back. <laughs> sorry about it that. Side. It seems on the side. Oh. Of the cubes right now, they are pushing up way, way too far, but managed to at least stabilize right now. Ultimate's coming in into play. We do have the graph blade coming up. No nano is using as at 32%, but as the side of Pistachio right now, they do have the only two support ultimates coming up, but they do have a graph just into, but with no real follow up. Yes, yeah, so we'll have to see how that plays out. We have grabs actually coming up for both teams here. So we'll have to see how that plays out in that regard. Still kind of holding up in the choke here, Pistachios. Uh, Rob Zoni is doing a very good job trying to hold up the side. And the Valkyrie is now popped by Pinky Back GG. But here comes the first grab with a fantastic, fantastic nade coming out for Aerionix. So it gets a few picks there as all of a sudden gets a few picks there with a Dragon Blade. That was a fantastic grab and net, uh, nade combination there. Retired Hobo right now just trying to stay alive. Is he gonna get staggered? Most no, he actually manages to get out of there with the skin by the skin of his teeth. Now Bobo actually managed to get the party killed the charge onto Odashi, but that doesn't really help considering that the point is taking up the 90%. They gotta have to touch the point soon enough. Robin uh, Robo does have that urge shadow right here to just stop the match right now. Here, here comes another shadow and here comes, here comes grab. the grab. Where's the follow up? Are they shielded? They are oh, gonna die. But they weren't able to get to the point after all of that. They had them hold up there, but they were so distracted, just trying to wipe out the team. They forgot the point was there and ticking up to 100%. So not exactly a C9, but seemed to be a bit of groupthink there. Completely forgot about the point as a result. Skeet Delight have taken the first point on Lijan Tower. Very, very true. Rob right now just being uh, really good on the Reinhardt, just zoning out the most of the team of Pistachio. That basically uh, burned quite a lot of time considering the fact that they couldn't push without that fear of Rob inside them. Hopefully that they do overcome that and be a little bit more aggressive coming into this next fight. We'll have to see what happens here. Uh, we still have the 2-2-2 two, two, two compositions on both sides. DPS on one side are being the Genji Hanzo and the other Genji McCree. So both kind of one hit scan and one kind of off. So very interesting compositions here. Looks like it's just a straight out brawl in the get go. Both Reinhardt's have their shield up heading through to the main skyscraper area. Looks like Team Yeet Delight are going to quickly edge their way out. Here comes Unbubble. Oh, what a charge. What a charge from Unpopbubble. That is, oh. and oh, look at that, the double boot from HSN. 
Yeah, very good play coming out. Uh, on the retired Hobo basically got the opening pick that basically made it a 5v6 or and Unpopable just went for a cheeky little bit of charge, got the pin, that basically sealed the deal for them. That's the amount of aggression they need uh, if they want to try and get back into this match right now. Hopefully yeah. they are able to stall it at this door and not just that team, uh, team possession just push, uh, team ski just push through. Now we're seeing a bit more poke here from Skeet to light. Uh, Rubzoni is down very- Oh, Retired Hobo gets a great pick onto Arionix. Just throwing the arrow blindly out there and finds some value for it over here. So again, 5v5 at the moment. Barry is down very low for Rubzoni. Hello is over there trying to get a few picks, but unfortunately, Genji doesn't really stack up very well against the Reinhardt. He will be eliminated. Looks like Skeet the Light are charging their way onto the point. Here comes the Sound Barrier, but here's also the Dragon Blade and the High Noon. That is going to be, I think, a great retake. Uh, Pistachio had to hide from the threat of the High Noon, but by doing that, they were cordoned in by the rest of the heroes, by Odesai, Bali, Zoni, and as a result, looks like a retake from Skeet the Light. I'm probably not getting kept up in that first fight. The McCree of Cubes is just basically destroyed and allowed his team to manage to at least push through. Right now, you can see in terms of the ultimate advantage game, you can see that on the side of and the side of Skeet, they, they do have that nano boost. It's gonna be coming handy with the Graviton coming out right now. Nano Grav is very good, and especially with the Zarya's high energy. Here comes the Grav! Skeet comes the Oh, here dragon comes the Dragon! Oh, oh, wow, that was a fantastic sound barrier right there. Saved them all from the wrath of the Dragon Strike. And it'll be a clean team wipe here for Skeet Delight. Very, very true, but it did cost them a number of ultimates. As you can see, they basically had to use all three of them. Cube's the only one close to a, yep, close to a high noon right now. But on the side of, on the side of Pistachio, they do have that nano, they do, sorry, they do have the Genji Blade, and they do have Pinky with that, uh, <clears throat> with that damage boost. Might be able to help coming into the next match, considering that they can't actually stop this. I think the ults really stack up in favor of the statue. Here. here comes the high noon, throwing it out there in favor of... Oh, it does actually find a Lucio. That is a huge pick right there. Still kind of trading back. Here comes the Dragon Blade. You're flying out all the ultimates here. Dragon Blade Fury right here. It's almost like a lightsaber duel. Throwing them both out, but it looks like Hilo will get the pick advantage there. Go but he will get subsequently taken down by Aeronautics. The only two supports now on the field. On the field, let's see how long this Lucio can at least stall. Saw it out. Cog is sticking up to 83%. A very respectable, very respectable amount actually gained on the side of uh, Team Skeet over here. He was still managing to live through all that. Kind of hit his way around the side of the wall there. He's managed to regroup with his team without having to die and wait to respawn. So that actually could mean a lot in terms of grouping up for this next push. Dakari is popped out here by Pinky Mac GG. Again, just slowly poking with the shield at by Rob Noni. And here comes the Shatter, but only grabs his Zarya. Still a very valuable pick at this point. Reinhardt is taken out by Retired Hobo's Dragon Strike, who's still out the back. They're all pushing out the front. Uh, retired Hobo has dominance from the back, destroying picks at anyone who wants to try and take the skyscraper. Ski didn't really, uh, weren't really able to provide that much poke damage throughout the entire fight. Uh, and all in all, they, they they don't really have any ultimates coming up aside from the Aeronox uh, nano boost. But there's no real good nano boost target. I guess Odashi could be able to just get nano dash in and perhaps get a blade. Uh, out of it, but let's see. Oh, nano blade. No. Here comes the nano blade. Nano stick. Oh, no, it's the nano this McCree. could be massive. There has been the sound barrier out, so let's protect him for most of it. And are you kidding me? Oh, here comes the dragon blade. So he waits for Helio's dragon blade to come out, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. They committed so many ultimates, and it looks like the graviton surge is a real deciding factor in this fight over here. They are so scattered, they didn't save their sound barrier for actually retaking the point. So when they go on to retake their point, they are totally naked. Absolutely no support at all. But as I say that, your boy Jimbo seems to be able to get three and retakes the points. What just happened? Basic, uh, basically, <laughs> they got hit by the grab without any support, really. Genji and Zara can do a lot of damage. Rob managed to get a kill on HSN. This is basically spelling out disaster on Santa Pistachio. And this game is just about done with Skeet going to go up one in the. One in the match right now. I don't think there's any other way for her to come back. I think he's just gonna get taken out immediately after they deal with that. Yep, she's just gonna fly for a bit. They just and it's just gonna come in the point, just stall it out. But at this point, no real. Just, at this point, they're just biding for time. But it looks like that will be a clean wipe. 99, 99 each way, but it will fall in favor of Skeet Delight.
Uh, what a fantastic first engagement here on Legion Tower. And I thought Pistachio actually had it. They had a considerable number of picks there, but they just couldn't kill the Zarya. Zarya has very, very high on energy. It just wasn't able, they weren't able to counter her. Lucio play of the game coming out. Uh, pretty rare you see it. Unless he gets a really good kill. I think he got a double boop here. The double boop, there we go. Yep. It was on, on Lucio and on the Reinhardt. And a little known fact is that getting an environmental kill actually counts as uh, two kills in terms of getting play of the games. So that's why you see a bit more notably. But anyway, fantastic first engagement here on Li Jane Tower. Uh, I think that Pistachio will be walking away from that kind of scratching their heads because there was an opportunity for them to take it to a uh, point three. But unfortunately, lack of execution on their point and lack of consideration for the Zarya on high energy just wasn't able to let them get to the third point. Moving in to the next map, we are going into Dorado. Dorado uh, generally always has been uh, very favorite for the GOAT composition, especially if you watch uh, OWL. Uh, GOATs has generally been the predominant uh, strategy for this, specifically Reinhardt GOATs. You actually rarely see any other GOATs. Perhaps moving into second point, you would see more of the dive GOATs with the Winston. But uh, seeing how the teams uh, play play based off the last map of the Jung Tower, we're most likely not going to see that. Instead, we're going to see a lot more 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So it will be interesting to see what DPS um, lineup is going to be uh, moved in and out, considering that everything else is generally uh, quite stagnant. Indeed. Well, we shall see how it shall pan out. It, look, the um, game was a lot more back and forth than the scoreline would suggest, so I'm expecting a bit of a closer match here in Dorado. Both teams have showed their potential, but it'll be interesting to see the compositions that they assemble here on Dorado. So it looks like we have Skeet the Light on the attack first, and Pistachio on the defense. And I think for this uh, for this match around, uh, I will leave Blackburn to do the PXP, and I'll resort to color just to see if I just to change these up a little bit. So uh, there you go. <laughs> All right, moving in. Now we're going to just wait we're another 10 seconds before Assemble Heroes has come in just to give you a bit more background on Dorado. Dorado is currently in the a, sorry, in the OWL uh, map pool. We've seen it time and time again. If you have been keeping up with that, specifically, um, the most notable one was the Shanghai Dragons versus Dallas Few last week. Uh, Youngjin got off that card and gave Dallas Few practically a win. Hopefully we don't see that coming into this matchup. And right now, teams are just basically in the pick phase. As you can see, we are going for a more 2-2-2, uh, but a very different type of 2-2-2. Two, two, two. On the side of Pistachio, they're running a double main tank. Uh, a weird combination of the healer of the Mercy and the Mora and the DPS. Um, also a bit questionable, but we'll see how it goes. But on the side of Geet, they are going to run most likely the Bastion gonna see how that turns out. Nope, uh, we got debated. He is gonna, they are gonna run the Shimada brothers. Yep, looks like the standard 2-2-2 two, two, two for both. They destroyed a trap that's laid out by the Junkrat, so that's his plan absolutely filled over there. And looks like the standard bunker up on the top there. Still pushing the payload out. On side of, on side of Pistachio, they're not gonna have a lot of ability to prevent damage from coming through considering that they only have the shield, they don't really have a defense matrix that can absorb large amounts of damage. So they are they are they can't really play the poke game right now. They really have to be adamant in their attack and be extremely aggressive if they want to hold the enemy team right now. Whereas on the side of uh, Team Skeet right now with the Hanzo and the with the Hanzo and the Genji, they are going to be able to poke, so this might be this might spell disaster coming out. And yes, you can see the first kill coming out already on retired Hobo. Rob just gets an Earth Shadow immediately and just chooses to throw it in. This fight is done and we are moving. And this should be an easy cap on the second point. That was just a clean first team fight there from Skeet Delight. I think, especially on Dorado, the best point where you want to hold on the first point is just under that bridge, and it's a fantastic choke point. You can hold it there and hold it well. It can be very hard for the attacking team to get through it, but there was absolutely no coordination there. The Reinhardt was keeping his shield up, but it wasn't enough. The cubes came through as a Hanzo. Odasa came through as a Genji, just getting the picks, and they're able to just slice right through him like, a, like butter. As you can see, as you can see, the, the team composition of Pistachio is 
practically not working out. We're already moving into second street, second phase, and you can see that no one on the side, or at least the majority of the people oh, on the side of Pistachio are not, are not actually having any of their ultimates. Unpopable and HSN basically only just reached 70%. You can see that the poke damage coming out of the enemy team is hurting them just quite significantly. Basically, the entire team of Team what? is going to have six ultimates coming into the next fight. Unpopable seemed to want to be able to just swing his hammer through the enemy team, but there was so much damage coming through his shield. He didn't seem to even want to retreat or anything. He was just standing there accepting his fate. So it was basically free uh, ultimate farming and free abilities for and free kills for uh, Neat Delight. Sorry, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was Unpopable, yeah. I'd like to see Unpopable switch off this, uh, this Reinhardt right now, or at least the entire team composition change. But as I say, the half gets a crucial kill onto Cubes, the Dragon Strike not coming in, but Odashi with the Dragon Blade gets a double kill with the dash, and Rob gets a kill on Unpopable. They basically, you had, they basically just threw all five ultimates in that fight and basically won it. They are moving into third space with an incredible time of 5 minutes, 20 seconds, and I don't think, uh, Possession is going to be able to stop this. And they didn't stop Cube's uh, Dragon Strike, but it wasn't even the deciding factor in the fight anyway. So, although they did stop an ultimate, it didn't stop them from losing the fight. So, they seem to be getting the right picks at the wrong times, it seems like. Very, very true. Ultimate's coming in right now. Uh, here comes a Urcha out of Rob. Ooh, doesn't uh, get anyone. Didn't really get anyone, but it doesn't really matter. Cubes is popping off. He managed to flank on the back line, gets a quad kill, and they are pushing this card. I don't think... I don't think Pistachio has ever won a fight on this map yet. It's already been 4 to 5, but this is probably their best chance. They have 4 ultimates coming out, and MMI has switched over to the end. And this is the part where the body blocking comes in as well. I know you're only going to come spawn, so they're going to be all up there, not letting anyone pass. Cubes is right behind there, gets retired, Hobo, pops out the Valkyrie in a very vain attempt to keep everyone healed up. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. Here comes the tire. Tire is going to have to be huge. Unfortunately, doesn't Unfortunately even gets nothing. Pinky Mac, the only one on the car. If they kill her, this is gonna get capped. Heptalize not gonna be able to touch it in time. This game is done. Unpopable and retired Hobo basically did not use their ult the entire time of this map. I think they might be saving it for the upcoming attack phase, but I don't know. And honestly, if you get to the point where you see that the time increases from the standard four minutes after capturing three points, you know that you really need to uh, spend some time figuring out, all right, well, what do we got to do on this attack? So that was a very, very one side of the fair there on the side of Skeet Delight. We saw some fantastic team fights there. Cubes was doing a fantastic job as the Hanzo, really getting behind unnoticed and getting those essential picks to just get through and win team fights. And Pistachio didn't have any answers to it. The whole problem with the uh, with the team composition of Pistachio was that they aren't uh, they aren't able to deal with any real amount of poke. Um, basically, without the sh with only shields, they can be destroyed, and they do take a long time to get charged up. So by the time your team are able to just destroy the shields, the two tanks are basically just sitting ducks. You are able to poke them down, to poke them out for a lot of uh, ult charge, and they basically won the game off that. But enough about that. Let's move on to the next. Uh, portion of the map with uh, Pistachio on the attack. They seem to be going for a Reinhardt Diva with a Farah Mercy composition. But on the side of uh, Skeet, they are running the McCree and Odacy. Oh, I'm just gonna call him Oda. Still running that Genji. So let's see how well Cubes deals. Let's see how well Cubes deals with the Farah of MMI. That's gonna be a very crucial factor coming into the attack. We shall see how it all pans out. Far Mercy is an interesting pick. Far can be a real game changer if there's no real aerial dominance, but it looks like Cubes again! Nope. <laughs> Destroyed. Just an initial push couple shots from Cubes. I was about to mention about the hit scan. Looks like Cubes has that covered as a McCree. Yeah, very, very true. MMI actually pushing up right now without the Mercy. She's just poking on the side lines right now. Nope, now Pinky Max just gonna come into it. The entire team, uh, the entire team Skeet decided to drop onto the point. Oda is just gonna flank right now with the Genji. He's trying to go for a dash. Unfortunately, not be able to get the kill, but does manage to get out with his, with his life. And help, help does get d Max. This is a very crucial kill right now. Rob should be able to try and collapse on them, but no, they decide to play a little bit more of a waiting game right now, which is... We just had Bobo, and Cubes gets a kill onto HSN. This fight is done right now, and the entire team of Team Pistachio should be trying to get in. That was a very no. risky res that managed to get hit off by Pinky Mac, but they're still not pushing the payload. Here comes the High Noon from Cubes, trying to peek up, but looks like the shield on the bench matrix will be up to counter that, but still gets unpoppable. 
if you do if uh, just for any viewers who do not know how the high noon works you can if you are hiding behind the reinhardt shield when the high noon is active it's gonna sh shoot the shield if that breaks and your, your head is still a target you will be killed so try not to hide behind the reinhardt shield uh just a bit of a tip there yeah um can't always rely on the shield for full protection, always trying to hide behind a barrier. But it looks like that Skeet the White have seems to hold up a good defense at this choke point I was talking about earlier. Oda so... with the Dragon Blade up right now, he goes for a deflect, he, he might be going in for it right now. He does have the Nano Blade, he's going for the flex. here comes the grab! Is he going away? Yep, here's here the Here comes, there we go! Oh. Does not need the Nano, just the... Just a graph, but Rob did throw in the Earth Shatter as well. I'm not sure if that was technically needed, but uh, a welcome addition, I suppose. Yeah, the quadruple kill coming out from Otis side and the stagger kill onto Hilo Patil. So it, it again, it just doesn't seem like Pistachio will have any answers to what uh, Skeet the Light are doing, especially Cubes McCree and Otis Odaisy. I think it's Odaisy. I'm just gonna keep calling him Oda, it's just a lot <laughs> easier for me to try and pronounce that. But essentially, the problem with Possession right now is that they're getting flanked on almost all sides uh, with the ability of the McCree's just shooting the HSN shield from the main, and then you have Oda on the side just basically uh, poking with the Genji, as you can see. And he's got the dash, gets the kill. Does get finally killed though. Cubes home down to retired Obo as he put on the high noon, hoping to try to get that pick onto Cubes. But it didn't work. Fastest finger first, and Cubes won the draw. Yep, yeah. Now we can see retired Hobo switching off. He is going onto that soldier. We haven't seen soldier much in any sort of meta for a very long time, so it's a bit of a welcome, welcome a choice. Let's see how well he is able to deal with the with the McCree of Cubes, which has been popping off quite recently. Oda right now just trying to look for a flank, just trying to look for a kill, just trying to reset dashes and. Get in. He might be in a bit of trouble right now, but though does have to get to get out right now. It does get here healed. Comes. Here comes the dragon strike. Fires to the middle of the payload, but the angle wasn't very good. Looks like we're on the flank. The flank. HSN does get a pick, but was naded. Here comes the nade. Oh, the dragon. Sorry, the bomb gets one. And here comes the dragon blade. Oh, but so stuff is going so fast here. I can't even keep track of what's going on. They're getting pushed right back to spawn though. Even with the use of all their ultimates and the fantastic charge from HSN. It is not going to be enough. Great shadow coming out of HSN. Just unfortunate that the rest of the team wasn't able to follow up on that. He, uh, they, was, they were a bit too deep after the charge he made. And we are going to go for a tactical pause. Not sure who called it out, but let's just look at the facts right now. You can see it plain and clearly. Team Skeet has the ultimate advantage in their hand. They have four ultimates up right now in this upcoming fight. Unfortunately, Unpopable has disconnected. He's going to come back with basically no alt charge. No one else on the side of Pistachio has anything, and Pinky Max already using the Valkyrie. I think this match is done and dusted. There's five seconds left, and the only hope they have is if they try and get a kill onto Cubes or the Reinhardt. But should I mention, both are actually only 1% away from their ultimates. So we have a 3v... sorry, 4v1 ultimate advantage here. So it looks like it'll be a pretty obvious finish as to who will be the winner. But we'll have to wait and find out. Again, I, I just don't really see much adapting to what Skeet the Light are putting in their way. So they went the far. The far didn't last too long. So they switched to the soldier, but a soldier is there's not enough damage as a soldier and a Hanzo alone to break down the Rhine Shield of Robzoni. If you really want to break down the Rhine Shield, you need something like a Sombra to hack him so he can't put it up. Or you may need something like a Junkrat just to have raw damage output to break down that barrier. Or maybe even a Zarya with a Zarya grab bombs or a Zarya bombs in order to get down the barrier. If you lift the barrier up, Soldier has very little impact. The only real hope you have is Soldier is try to flake behind him and use a tactical visor. But if you're not getting much damage or kills, it's going to be a long time between each one. It looks like we are coming back. I'm not too sure about the player, though. It looks like they are just... I think it is resuming uh, I don't think... Yeah, they are resuming it. They decided to just continue the fight without Unpoppable. The game is done regardless anyways. They, was... they couldn't even touch the card because of the graph. And... Basically, uh, Team Skeet up 2-0 in the series right now. This might be a very quick one. Here comes Rob Zoni with the play of the game. Swinning as a Reinhardt through the first point. 
big earth shatter right there just gets the swing gets the fire strikes everything you want to see in a good reinhardt play and that turned out to be a team kill so very good job to keep the light there so as i was saying i just don't see enough adaptability coming from pistachios at the moment i believe it's just a bit of, i think it's just a mix of everything there's not enough teamwork there's not enough follow-up there's not enough of a lot of things i mean if you're talking about the Farah composition that they had, they could have technically still uh, continued to run it. Farah can still it's easily just flank around the right side, get in the position where she's able to just push down rockets where uh, at the choke there where the Reinhardt normally stands with the rest of his team, and they could have just collapsed easily, especially with the Farah Mercy damage boost com combo. Uh, but unfortunately, they, they did not think of that. They just went to switching heroes after hero after hero and basically just kept resetting their alt economy. Just really did not, no real combos in terms of the alt, and they basically uh, couldn't get anything done, unfortunately. We'll have to see how it goes on this next map here. Um, the game was unpaused. It seems like unintentionally, but the outcome probably would have been the same either way. Unpopable is back, so it looks like we'll be switching over to the next map real soon. And I think next one, I don't know if it's 2CP or if it's... I think it's 2CP next one. Yep, should be a 2CP map. Unfortunately, we do not know what map it actually is. Uh, we will see in just a minute. In just a minute, though. But overall, um, in terms of just the just the ability of Skeet the Light's uh, cubes to just pop off on a lot of the heroes, specifically the McCree, it's uh, phenomenal how well he's actually doing. Just farming ultimates, farming that high note, he's getting it basically every single time in almost every single fight. I'm not really too sure what else to add So that. I think you're 100% on point. And I feel like it also just comes down to the deployments of the tanks and the DPSs. We've seen a few occasional good picks from... HSN as a Reinhardt charging in, uh, but not really much else. And looks like we are going to our next map, which will be good old Temple of Anubis. Temple of Anubis. Uh, this map pulls also in the OWL uh, currently. Um, very uh, a map that um, teams tend to either snowball or get snowballed on. We have seen first holes. We have seen basically storms on it. So it's a bit of a mix in the air. If the past few matches of anything to go by i believe that if team skip is team skip is on the attack they are going to be able to snowball this quite hard unless the miracle play comes out of pistachio right now let's see what the composition is coming in in the next uh, couple of seconds what do you think they are going to run still going to stick with the 222 uh look it might be goats but i still feel like 222 is what we're going to be seeing uh we've seen it all and it looks like we're right yeah 222 but we are seeing the widowmaker come out from cubes Considering his strong performance on the McCree, could still be a good choice here. And especially with the bridge up there, if the Widow's left aren't contested, they can have free reign over point A. Yeah, that's very, very true. We can see uh, attacking, both attack and uh, defensive Widowmakers has been played on on Anubis uh, since basically the start of the since the, since the start of Overwatch. To be honest, it always has been a very strong sort of composition strong uh, here just because of the large amount of sight lines everywhere uh, we can see that um, help has put a bomb down in the enemy spawn let's see whether or not they actually fall for it i don't think they are i think they are looking at it right now and oh no um herbo actually went inside just to get some uh, ultra that's actually pretty smart let's move on to the next map right now let's see which side they do rotate they are going to try to funnel into the left side room Right oh, I just oh. saw that bomb come out. Helio gets a good pick on the Oras oh, Daisy, so I feel like that'll be an initial reset. Unless I can get another pick to even it all up. Very good, uh, very good, uh, very good play coming out. But Q's man, he gets a kill and help as well. It's a 5v5 right now with advantage over the, the nade onto side. Unpopable. This proves to be fatal. Unpopable had a lot of rain there. Oh, this, man, this is just back and awesome. forth, back and forth. He does get rest and he's back in fire. He gets a kill onto you. This basically spells the end for Team Skeet's uh, initial attack. So we are going to move on to the next one. He does get the kill onto Unpopable. This time there is no Mercy Rest to come and bring him back. So he's going to take quite a long time to come back in. But as I say that, Helio actually gets a kill onto Cubes. Uh, the defense right now, it's a bit of... Uh, 
a bit of a hit and miss right now. They're still, they're, they're, still try, they're still actually on the point, and it looks like Pinky Mac has gone full emergency mode. Tom went with the Valkyrie, try and get some more contesting. And there's still this Junkrat here. Helio is raining uncontested above, throwing grenades left, right, and center. Rob Zonai comes through with the Earth Shatter. Oh, but the new boy Jimbo gets down the rip tire, which could have proved to be absolutely fatal. But what a fantastic Zarya target there. Yes, very, very good play coming. Uh, the kill on the unpalpable means and the and the no res means that he isn't he wasn't able to come back in time for the team skeets push and that basically spelled the end for team pistachio. We are moving into the next one right now. He Helio right now be having a very forward position. He might not be able he might not be able to uh might well get back his team. No, he does get killed by Oda and here comes a grab right now. Here comes a and here oh, what? oh the reverse! Oh wow! We had the Valk sorry not the Valkyrie, the Graviton Surge come in to glue down Pistachio, but Pistachio came with a counter Graviton Surge, but they also have the Dragon Strike ready and ready and roaring to use. So wow, looked like it would have gone one way, but in just one second it flipped the other way. Yeah, but they basically had to invest three ults into that entire fight. They had to invest the Graviton, they had to invest the Shatter, they had to invest the Dragon Strike. They basically have nothing coming into this next one. Pinky Mac, the only one close, but Renai Hobo gets the early kill onto EU. They are gonna have to be able to... Uh, this makes Team... Uh, team Skeet actually have to reset, but no, Rob decides to... You know, we don't need the Lucio, we're still gonna go into this fight because we do have some level of ult advantage. They do have the Shadow, they do have the Nano right oh, now. Rob gets low though. Oh, healed up! What a fantastic nade heal there! And and he gets a kill on the Unpalpable again. Oh, yeah, trap though! No. Throws out the Shadow, gets a few people. Oh! We'll leave it with the trap. Oh, man. That could have proved absolutely fatal. Here comes a tire, absolutely destroyed. Oh, the pin! I don't even know what to say anymore. The charge was stopped mid. Uh, I'm tongue tied. So much is going on right now. The boop absolutely throws Rob Zonai's charge off an Ori. But it looks like only two supports on the point. Very weak. Here comes the dragon trying to zone people out. Hope he gets a kill, but no. Rob gets a charge onto Helio right now. Team Skid should be able to cap this with a pretty impressive time of just over four minutes unless someone else is able to touch. Here comes a Shadow. MMI gets hit. Yeah, He's on the ground. Shatter. He's not He's getting just... back up. Oh. Dragon, Dragon Blade is out. Looks like they pop the sound barrier just to live a little bit longer, but it won't be too long at all. Picky back is still on there trying to heal up. Hello, P. Uh, as the Reaper. But it won't be enough, and they will take both points on Temple of Anubis. It appears that my friend Blackburn has seen so much that he's absolutely lost for words. Yeah, um, basically there was a... I mean, Team Possession basically had a really, had a much better hold compared to the other two previous maps. So there is a signs of life coming out from, from them, but they... But Team Skeet still has four minutes on the clock, which is a very good time, especially on two CP maps. Uh, as you can see, we are moving into the attack right now. Their attack has to be just as good or just about the same as Team Skeet if they want a chance to um, move this into a reverse sweep. Honestly, from what I've been seeing... Um... I don't even know what to say. What I've been seeing, I'm not really too sure what to expect. It's very hard to try and capture both points on the, on the other side, especially when your defense is absolutely crumbled with four minutes remaining on the other side. So it'll be interesting to see what they try and do to make this work. It looks like they're still going the Hanzo there because the Hanzo did work out for them pretty well. But it just look. I think Hanzo, if you're a good Hanzo that can flank and get the occasional pick from the back end and have fantastic dragon strikes that don't exactly need a Zarya graph for them to be effective, then it's worth it. But if it's very hit and miss, then it's not a very wise pick to continue with for the rest of the map. Very, very true. We are going into the next, we are going to fight with a double Shimano Bros against the basic, uh, sort of the bread and butter comp of Team Skeet, which is the Genji and Cubes on the McCree. We've seen how well Cubes has done on McCree. Let's see if we can shut him out on first point right now. They are going to rotate onto the right side. Pinky Mac might be a bit slow, but no, Cubes gets a kill on the HSN. Oda gets a kill on the Pinky Mac. Both supports down on the side of Pasasio. Unpumbles drops as well. This fight is done and dusted on the side of Pasasio. They should be trying to go for a quick reset. 
Mm, yeah, like, this hasn't worked at all. Both supports, Odaisy and Cubes, are just doing an absolutely fantastic job cleaning up all these fights here. Even getting the flashbang um, kill as Cubes. Now, the flashbang only does very little damage, but damage does, can finish someone off very low HP. So if I see that, it looked like Hatred 7 was just trying to flank his way to the point somehow, but Cubes has got a very sharp eye and very quick reflexes, it seems. Yeah, very, very true. Moving on to the next fight here, basically build off one. One minute. Ooh, they're going up. Go for defect. They are trying to go for the right side, but Unpopable might get me collapsed on. Here comes a charge. Oh, right Ryan into Ryan. The stun was all. The stun was all. Oh, a double dash kill from Oh Daisy. Oh Daisy. Oh Daisy. Where I don't know what the poem goes, but I'm trying to make a pun out of it. Daisy gets three with the dash kills. A little bit of capture made by Pistachio. There'll be another reset here. Yeah, help, but I, I don't think he's gonna be able to get out of this. He's getting half, but no, that's get the dash in time to just come back with his team. Unfortunately, when they rotated that side, Unpopable was a bit, just uh, just a bit too far from the rest of his team, so he was just collapsed on. If he was a bit closer, they would have managed to push through the top left side and try and stick someone up there. But you can, as you can see, on the side of Team Ski, they basically have oh, just about six ultimates coming up, while the side of... Uh, Whereas on the other side, Abomo gets, he gets cut off actually, he gets killed once again in the fight. Here comes a huge 5-man shatter, and basically huge cleanup coming through. They only have to use uh, two ultimates there, so that's actually pretty decent coming into the last two minutes, and they still have four ultimates up and ready. Look, I don't know if you know the no math too well, but for me, Genji Blade plus a small room equals sliced and diced potato salad. If you're in that room there and you don't have any counter to a Genji, you don't have a McCree, you don't have a Brigida, you don't have any focused DPS, you're just gonna be wiped the floor with. So, Ode AC is doing a fantastic job following up on these Dragon Blades, just absolutely shutting out any chance of claiming the point for Pistachio. MMI decides to go back onto the Pharah. Let's see if he can get better results compared to the Dorado game. Thuz just keeps us get hit with a direct rocket, but he does get healed up on the side of Team Possession. They are managing to push in. They decide to nano Oda right now, but he doesn't have his uh, Genji Blade, so I'm not sure what the point was that. Actually, he's fine. Mm, that was a, dive in. That's yeah, that, that was a little bit of a wasted uh, nano boost, but. He could have really been saved for another situation because actually, oh, Daisy was coming up to his dragon blade really, really soon. So, again, a little bit of a waste of resources here. Either way, Skeet the Light are still getting the upper hand, and here comes the dragon blade just as the zombie air comes out. Still able to take down HSN though. Let's get HSM gets MMI. Unpopable uh, decides to say enough, right? Hard health. Helio decides to pick it up. He is on the mortar right now. Um, coming into the last 30 seconds, this is probably uh, the best. This is probably one of. Sorry, this is the last time the team possession is going to be able to try and push this into a second point. Defense, they have three ult. They have four ultimates coming up right now, and it's going to be crucial. Let's see whether or not they are going to be able to touch the point, actually. They decided to go rotate through right side. There's only 10 seconds left on the clock. I don't think they are going to be able to touch it, actually. There's a crap come out. Finds no one. Fantastic shield placement from Rob Zoni. It's just a big fat wipe down there. Team and kill. The game is done, ladies and gentlemen. In just about 30 minutes, Team Skeet has completely destroyed Team Pistachio. Games were not close except for maybe the first one. Play of the game going to Oda. Right now, most probably the Dragon Blade with the 5k when after the Q Shadow. Yup, here we go. There's a huge slice and dice. They're all on the floor waiting to receive it. And play your kill streak. And Team Skeet, uh, sorry, just is it. Just showing their showing their chops. Their cubes on McCree specifically. Yeah, it looks like it'll be the 304 Skeet Flight. You should be very proud of themselves for that performance. It was a very, very dominant showing. Didn't really give any chance to. Pistachios at all. Pistachios did look like they had some chance down on Lee Jane Tower, but the Zarya was able to kill three of them from behind. The high charge Zarya, they had no heroes there to counter her. And I can see the talent there on Pistachios. They were doing a pretty good job at points, but especially the uh, payload and 2CP maps, they just had nothing to answer for. Um, it looked like they had a bit of like a teamwork, and it even seemed like the Skeet Blot had a bit higher uh, mechanical skill cap, especially with Odaisy and Cubes as a DPS. They are an absolutely deadly duo, and they just had no answers.
So I think he'll be back to the drawing board for Pistachios, but they should commend themselves for the valiant effort they put in. And I'm sure they'll come back even stronger next time. Yeah, hopefully, uh, just to round out, let's just round up the stream right now. Let's call who is the MVP. I think it's uh, pretty simple. I think it's Cubes right now. Cubes popped off on almost every single map, specifically on that McCree. He's been on the kill feed consistently. And he's, I'm pretty sure his kill death ratio is going to be through the roof after that game. Unfortunately, I don't really have access to statistics, but uh, I will probably go off your word there, Mr. Blackburn. Uh, I think it was a tie between Cubes and Odaisy. I think both DPSs on Skate the Light deserves uh, commendations because they both did an absolutely fantastic job. Especially, you can see from that first point on Dorado when Stashio was trying to go up as the Far Mercy. Mercy Farah goes up. Two seconds later, a couple of shots later, falls straight back to the ground. Mercy has to waste the res on that. Could it be used for more essential or a more resourceful time? So it was just absolute focus fire from those two. And I really do think, again, congratulations to all of Skeet the Light. But you can really see the skill seeping through from Cubes and Odaisy. Yeah, it's very, very true. And with that, I think we are just about done. Um... Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank Raidbreaker for helping us stream this game on the AOL channel. I'd like to thank Sandshark for uh, helping me cast this game as well. And um, if you have any closing remarks, Sandshark, uh, say it now. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Blackburn, for being my casting partner. It's always a pleasure uh, casting with AOE. Uh, be sure to stay tuned to AOE Sports and join the Discord if you haven't already. On the Discord, we have updates about all upcoming matches, all upcoming stream matches, and if you're actually interested in participating in a team or finding a team to play with for upcoming seasons of Ascent and AAOL, we do have a recruitment section as well. So please be sure to join the Discord and have a look around and see if you want to join a team and get involved. We have a fantastic community here. It's always great to see everyone's support here. And, uh, yep, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for dropping by. We'll see you next time. Be sure to follow the channel, turn on notifications, and stay tuned for more updates and more matches right here on AOE Sports. On behalf of Raid Breaker, thank you very much. I think that is it for now, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the matches tonight, and have a good night. This has been Sandshark and Blackburn. Sandshark and Blackburn, out.